In the last lecture, we were uh, discussing the philosophy of uh, uh, enhancement of quality of water and wastewater. Just to review what we have discussed uh, earlier, I would like to say that uh, primarily the river water is the source of water, water supply and also sink for the disposal of wastewater. So that means we take water from the river and also uh, discharge treated effluents, sometimes treated, sometimes not treated into the rivers. So it is a source as well as a sink for the water. So in the last lecture, we dis discussed about the water quality enhancement with respect to drinking water. So just to, to have a, a review, the philosophy of uh, water treatment is to produce water potable water and which has a turbidity of uh, turbidity of uh, less than or uh, equal to 5 NTU. I have to produce a water with uh, turbidity less than or equal to 5 NTU. This is required because uh, I have to uh, satisfy the uh, the pleasing nature of the people, okay? the water should be pleasant. And also water should not have any fecal coliforms, fecal coliform content should be equal to 0, 0 organisms per 100 ml of water and total coliforms should be of the order of uh, 3 to 5 organisms per 100 ml. So these are the, these are the basic requirements of uh, water that is uh, potable water. So what we try to do is that we have uh, a treatment plant, a treatment plant has number of units. These treatment uh, uh, units would try to produce water which is free of uh, turbidity or turbidity less than 5 NTU and all also produce water which is uh, which does not have any coliforms really speaking the coliforms indicate as you have known that indicates pathogens presence of pathogens so presence of pathogens are indicated by coliforms now if you look at the various uh, units water treatment plant if I take water treatment plant uh, diagram and see the units that are present in the water treatment plant. So the following are the units. Number one, the raw water or river water is coming in here. I get the river water and uh, to this river water, I add certain amount of chemicals like uh, alum and uh, lime alum and lime is added and then this water goes into what is called a, a unit coagulation flocculation coagulation and flocculation is the unit which tries to remove uh, the turbidity or the suspended particles present in water so we have got the unit coagulation and flocculation followed by what is called as sedimentation sedimentation tank. So we have coagulation flocculation followed by sedimentation, sedimentation is followed by 
what is called a filtration filtration unit and then filtration unit after filtration unit water moves to a unit called a disinfection so this is disinfection that is i am trying to kill the microorganisms present in water so this goes to water supply this is this is for water supply now let us see here these are the units and these units have a specific objective for example uh, addition of alum makes the small particles into bigger particles the mechanism of which we will study when you take the water treatment and in coagulation flocculation the growth of flocks will take place particularly in flocculation and then followed by sedimentation these units primarily remove uh, up to the filtration for example coagulation flocculation and sedimentation if i take these are the three units coagulation flocculation sedimentation removes uh, and filtration i will also put it here filtration removes uh, the suspended particles these are the units which remove the suspended particles and uh, produces water suspended solids are removed and this produces a water with a turbidity less than 5 ntu suspended particle removal will take place here so in fact up to sedimentation we call it as a pre treatment that is whatever treatment that we are giving here is called a pre treatment to water and the filtration itself is called as treatment and disinfection is called post treatment so these are the three things that is a pre treatment treatment and post treatment this is called post treatment post treatment these are the three uh, subsections we can say pre treatment and post treatment so up to the treatment we are trying to remove the turbidity after that we are uh, in the post treatment that is disinfection the purpose of disinfection is to kill microorganisms to kill pathogens and uh, pathogens are represented by fecal coliforms that's what i said presence of uh, uh, pathogens is represented by fecal coliforms that's what we have seen as far as the water treatment plant is concerned now let us turn our attention towards the waste water treatment okay if we have if we look at the waste water treatment suppose if you have here in the waste water treatment the purpose of waste water treatment is to remove the suspended particles number 1 okay that's what in the water treatment plant also we try to remove the suspended particles in waste water also we remove the suspended particles then in addition to that in waste water treatment we need to remove biodegradable organic matter so that means we want to remove the biodegradable organic matter that is written there third one is the waste water contains the microorganisms the pathogens we have to kill the microorganisms destructions of microorganisms for that we have again a treatment system the treatment system now here is called the waste water treatment system waste water treatment system has number of units say several units like for example let us take the what are the units that are uh, present in the waste water treatment plant so we have the following units so seeing the slide number 1 which i have presented here on the screen we have the waste water coming in this waste water ww is a waste water that is taken into the waste water treatment plant most of the times by gravity mostly by gravity it comes into the treatment plant 
okay it comes to the treatment plant mostly by gravity okay sometimes from uh, you know it comes into the a uh, sump well and then from sump well you may have to pump it to the wastewater treatment plant so that means collect the wastewater wastewater in a sump and uh, pump it and this pumping is for sometimes not always okay this all depends upon the topography of the place the first thing what will happen is that the waste water goes into what is called a, a screen first unit is a screen that's what you can see here in the film in the in the this thing that is waste water is a screen waste water goes into the screen what is the objective of the screen objective of the screen is to remove the floatable matter and to remove the big objects that are present in the waste water the floatable matter and uh, you know sometimes the rags are there sometimes of linen sometimes lots of floatable material will come into the waste water so the screen is going to remove that particular thing removal of floatables and large objectives objects are being removed in the screens we will discuss very soon about the design aspects of the screens now i will tell you what are the different units that are present in the this thing now the second one is after screens we have the grid chamber the waste water flows from the screens to grid chamber the purpose of grid chamber is to remove the grit to remove inorganic solids to remove inorganic solids so these inorganic solids are called grit again grit chamber the purpose of grit chamber is to remove grit and uh, this is inorganic solids inorganic solids means this the source of inorganic solids is coming from the street washings okay these are coming from street washings we are going to uh, get this lot of grit and normally the specific gravity of this particular grid is of the order of 2.5 our density is 2650 kg per cubic meter that is a grit okay and we design the grit chamber in such a way that design criteria of grit chamber is such that we don't want to remove any organic suspended solids so no removal of organic suspended solids in other words suspended solids could be organic suspended solids could be inorganic okay two both fractions are there organic suspended solids inorganic suspended solids so the grid chamber is designed to remove inorganic suspended solids it is not designed to remove the organic suspended solids because the organic suspended solids have got the specific gravity of organic suspended much much less than 2.65 much much less than 2.65 that's the reason why the organic suspended solids are not removed in grid chamber and i am not designing that uh, grid chamber for removal of organic suspended solids and after that we have got what is called a pst primary sedimentation tank again going to the slide you have to see the slide so primary sedimentation tank primary sedimentation tank is pst the objective of the primary sedimentation tank is again to remove the suspended solids okay so remove suspended solids and these suspended solids 
again I told you there are two types organic and inorganic okay some inorganic suspended solids also or inorganic suspended solids okay these inorganic suspended solids in this particular case will be very small size smaller size and hence they are not removed in the grid chamber grid chamber they are not removed okay the primary sedimentation tank is nothing but a sedimentation tank where the suspended particles settle down because of the gravity I am not go using any other uh, force it is only gravitational force for the settling of suspended particles these suspended particles get removed in the sedimentation tank. So the extent of removal of uh, suspended particles in uh, primary sedimentation tank is about 60 percent suspended solids removal occurs removal of suspended solids is to the extent of 60 percent in primary sedimentation tank and uh, to the extent of 30 percent BOD removal, BOD removal takes place. The BOD is a biochemical oxygen demand and uh, this biochemical oxygen demand uh, 30 percent of removal of BOD is there means this BOD is because of the suspended organic solids this is suspended organic solids these are because of organic suspended solids we are able to remove to the extent of 30 percent uh, BOD so in any sedimentation tank if you are having a sedimentation tank it removes 60 percent of solids and also removes 30 percent of BOD after the sedimentation tank the unit that is present is what is called a biological wastewater treatment unit biological wastewater treatment BWWT is the next unit that we have in the uh, slide. So what does happen what does uh, take what is that is going to take place here. So we have we have primarily said that we have got the uh, solids solids which are present in the wastewater these solids can be divided into two parts one is the inorganic solids another is organic solids. Solids of organic nature so inorganic solids could be both suspended plus dissolved solids similarly organic solids could be suspended plus dissolved solids I have got dissolved solids also in the organic fraction dissolved solids suspended solids could be in the form of even colloidal solids colloidal solids means size which we have discussed already the size of the particles is very very small the colloidal particles example of a colloidal particle present in the wastewater is a protein dissolved solids dissolved solids that is organic in nature could be the sort of a carbohydrate present in water carbohydrate present in water so in other words what we have is in the wastewater organic solids and inorganic solids and uh, organic solids could be suspended form and dissolved form dissolved, dissolved solids are like carbohydrates and suspended solids colloidal in nature could be of proteins now I am unable to remove in uh, in uh, in for example in uh, grid chamber I am removing this grid chamber removes suspended inorganic solids grid chamber is removing or uh, suspended inorganic solids and uh, primary sedimentation tank is able to remove again inorganic suspended solids and also organic suspended solids that is what I said here organic suspended solids inorganic suspended solids are removed by the primary sedimentation tank. Now what all I am left with is now some amount of colloidal solids 
and also the dissolved solids. So now the wastewater after primary treatment we have got uh, wastewater will contain after uh, grid chamber up to grid, cham uh, grid chamber plus uh, primary sedimentation tank will have mainly colloids plus organic dissolved solids. So I have got these are the two things what we have in the wastewater after grid chamber and primary sedimentation tank. So in the biological wastewater treatment what we try to do is we attack, we try to remove the colloidal and dissolved organic matter. So that means biological wastewater treatment, wastewater treatment is aiming at removal of dissolved organic matter dissolved organic matter and removal of uh, colloidal organic matter. So these are the two things which we will try to remove colloidal organic matter OM I will write organic matter. So in uh, biological systems when I take the biological system again come back to this particular portion I have I can write an equation like this that is I have got the organic matter OM is organic matter plus I will give oxygen dissolved oxygen to the bacteria it is called uh, D oxygen I am giving plus microorganisms <coughs> organic matter is present in the wastewater okay microorganisms are also present in wastewater and this is I am supplying supply of oxygen I am supplying oxygen by I am supplying oxygen using aerators I supply the oxygen by churning the water by mixing the water I supply the oxygen. So when I have this particular reaction that is organic matter is present, microorganisms are present in the wastewater and I am supplying the oxygen, what will happen is that the microorganisms utilize the organic matter uh, in the presence of oxygen and produce end products like uh, carbon dioxide and water. These are the carbon dioxide and water, these are the end products plus more cells, more cells means more bacterial cells and these cells which are produced are of a different type, they are flocculating, flocculating bacteria or flocculating biomass, let me call it as biomass, it flocculates it is a flocculating biomass is produced okay uh, when this reaction takes place. So now this flocculating biomass which is produced should be removed. So this flocculating biomass which is produced has a specific uh, nature what is the specific nature it can settle down by gravity this will settle by gravity. What is that I am doing here? You can see here dissolved organic matter I am converting into carbon dioxide and water okay and also more cells, cells are produced. Cells are nothing but again organic matter, I can consider cells to be organic matter. So now what is what all I am done is that dissolved organic matter is converted into suspended organic matter again back suspended organic matter and that suspended organic matter can be settled by gravity in a sedimentation tank, in a set tank, set is sedimentation tank. Suppose if I take a aerobic system, 
aerobic microbial system aerobic microbial system means i am putting oxygen this is all oxygen okay so that means presence of do do is supplied aerators are there aerators are present what will happen is that if i give organic matter in a aerobic system what will happen is 50% of this organic matter 50% i'll put it here is converted into carbon dioxide and water it is converted into carbon dioxide and water remaining 50% of uh, organic matter goes for the biosynthesis biosynthesis means synthesis of new cells that's what i have written here more cells okay biosynthesis or this is a biomass increase now i would ask, i would like to ask you a question if i give 1 kg of bod as waste water 1 kg of bod as waste water that is organic matter is 1 kg in terms of bod how much uh, biomass you can expect how much carbon dioxide and water you can expect so that means the amount of uh, the uh, bod that is going that goes into carbon dioxide and water that is this is energy for energy production okay the amount of biomass that goes into energy production is 50% that is 0.5 kg of bod 0.5 kg of bod is utilized for the production of energy and energy production is manifested by the production of carbon dioxide and water the cells are utilizing to produce energy and remaining 50% of the bod that is 0.5 kg of bod goes into the biomass synthesis so i will get a biomass weight of weight equivalent to 0.5 kg of bod that's what you are going to get it here so this particular biomass which i am saying here is flocculent flocculating in nature this is flocculating that means it can settle down that's why i have given a secondary sedimentation tank there you can see a secondary sedimentation tank comes into picture secondary sedimentation tank the objective of secondary sedimentation tank is to remove the suspended biomass sst is secondary sedimentation tank the objective is to remove the flocculating biomass by gravity by gravity i should remove this biomass okay there is no other force i am using it no energy is used is just by gravity i am trying to remove the i am settle i am trying to settle the biomass that is produced after that after the secondary sedimentation tank you know the biomass is removed and after that what all we have is that the liquid effluent from here the liquid effluent liquid effluent that is a treated waste water which does not have um, what is inorganic suspended solids organic suspended solids organic dissolved solids will be going out into the system so this particular thing this effluent is uh, no organic and inorganic suspended solids no organic dissolved solids solids no organic dissolved solids okay this liquid effluent is finally disinfected i will disinfect it i will add chlorine to it or ultraviolet radiation to it so that i will ultraviolet uh, the the effluent so that the microorganisms are killed that means the final step is the terminal treatment is disinfection
terminal treatment is disinfection. The purpose of disinfection is to kill pathogens before water to kill pathogens before water is allowed to get into the river. So, I finally discharge the treated effluent into the rivers. So, what we do is now is that we will uh, go into the next uh, slide and see the treatment systems more closely. So, what I can do is I can uh, divide the wastewater treatment systems into various categories. What is called first one is called a primary treatment. I am dividing the wastewater treatment system for the convenience of understanding into three segments. One what is called the primary treatment. Primary treatment constitutes the following units screens, second thing is uh, what is that commu, comminators So, these are also called grinders, these are called grinders. The purpose of the grinders is that they grind the large objectives into smaller pieces, so that they can be removed in the grid chamber, okay. that is what is the purpose. And afterwards we have got the grid chamber. grid chamber and the design aspect I will discuss very shortly about the grid chamber. After grid chamber I have what is called fourth one is called flow measurement, measurement device. I will install a flow measurement device after grid chamber because uh, I should have an inventory of the wastewater that is going into the treatment plant. If I do not have it, it is very difficult for me to find out the efficiencies of treatment systems. So, that is why flow measuring device is a must and unfortunately most of the treatment plants do not have it or if they have it also the thing uh, the flow meters do not work. So, it is all more all the more essential that we should ensure that this uh, flow measurement devices are in place for the treatment in the treatment plant. After this I have got what is called a primary sedimentation tank, PST primary sedimentation tank. So, in the primary sedimentation tank you can see from the figure there is what is called a overflow and underflow, underflow. What are these things? Overflow and underflow, overflow is the liquid liquid that is going out of the treatment unit, underflow is the concentrated solids, underflow is the solids are, which are removed from the bottom of the sedimentation tank. Okay. So, that is overflow and underflow. The overflow this liquid goes to the secondary treatment system that is uh, it goes into what is called secondary treatment system. which we will discuss now what is secondary treatment system. So, from primary the liquid flows through these units to remove the suspended solids okay, to some extent organic solids also. Then the liquid flows through the secondary treatment system and then underflow goes for what is called a solids handling system. it goes for a solid handling system okay overflow to the next unit underflow to some other unit okay that's what we'll see what would happen for the secondary treatment if you see the secondary treatment in the secondary treatment what we have is we can see that the wastewater coming from the primary treatment primary treatment what we discussed and it goes to a aerator aerator is the one which supplies the oxygen to the microorganisms that is what we discussed and there in the aerators 
uh, organisms, flocculating organisms are produced. Okay, now, let us uh, discuss more about this uh, secondary treatment system with the help of uh, some diagrams, additional diagrams I will discuss. Secondary treatment system. So, from the primary, the effluent from primary is coming in comes into a narrator these aerators are normally the mechanical aerators mechanical things and from this aerator the liquid flows into what is called let me put it is called a secondary sedimentation tank said tank or I can put it as SST secondary sedimentation tank and from secondary sedimentation tank a part of a settled sludge. So, these hatched, hatched lines are this is this entire thing is secondary sedimentation tank the hatched things here are biomass this is a settled biomass biomass which has settled settled biomass a part of this is pumped this is called a recycle pump is called a recycle pump through using a recycle pump a part of the biomass is put back into the aerators another part goes into the, for what is called a sludge or solids let me put it a sludge treatment system sludge treatment this entails one of the uh, secondary treatment system the Secondary treatment system which I have uh, drawn on the board is uh, or in the slide is what is called activated sludge plant. So, that means the secondary treatment system constitutes biological secondary treatment system constitutes number one is what is called attached uh, that is suspended growth system the growth is suspended that is in the aerator that is this is completely mixed reactor mixed reactor organisms are growing on the organic matter present in the wastewater because of the oxygen that you are supplying what is that is called a completely mixed system that is this is a completely mixed reactors what we have this suspended growth system. The example is activated sludge process is called ASP activated sludge process this is one type of system what we have suspended growth system which is very very popular. Okay, most of the treatment plants are based on this particular thing. So, in this there are some variations or some other groups of uh, activated sludge like extended aeration, another example is extended aeration, but extended aeration is also suspended growth system. It could be contact stabilization another system. So, I can have what is called a contact stabilization extended aeration these are two examples only I am giving it. So, this is one type of secondary treatment system second type of secondary treatment system I could have is attached growth systems attached growth attached growth systems. So, attached growth systems are also called as immobilized growth systems. immobilized growth systems. So, in immobilized growth system what I am trying to do is that I do not have a aeration it is not a completely mixed unit, but what I have is I have a solid media 
solid media in the reactor and I encourage the microorganisms to grow on the solid media. Growth of uh, microbes on solid media would occur. Okay, growth of microorganisms on solid media will occur. Now let us compare these two things. These are the two basically available wastewater treatment systems what we have. One is the suspended, another is attached growth systems. So the suspended growth system is what I have written here. So what we do is that we are aerating the wastewater. Okay, when I am aerating the wastewater, what is happening? The reaction that is taking place is organic matter. So again, I'll write it here: organic matter that is present in the wastewater plus the bacteria that are present in the wastewater. This is present in wastewater, this is also present in wastewater plus dissolved aeration, I am giving aeration would result in carbon dioxide, water and more cells. Carbon dioxide, water and more cells. This more cells are flocculating in type, flocculating. So this will settle down, settle down in secondary sedimentation tank. That is what happening here. So the organisms are growing, growth of organism is taking place in the aeration tank. Okay. In the secondary sedimentation tank, there is no growth taking place, only settling of organic, settling of the microorganisms taking place. So only settlement of the organisms will take place here. And what happens is that when you, when you take out the liquid from this aeration tank, the organisms are also coming out, those organisms are settling here and in order to maintain a desired concentration, design, designed amount of uh, microorganisms in the aeration tank, what I have to do is that I have to recycle. So this recycle is due to, uh, for, to maintain, maintain desired concentration of uh, biomass. to maintain desired concentration of biomass in the aeration, in the aerator or aeration tank, I am supplying, I am putting back some organisms. The organisms which have settled down here, I am putting back some organisms into this through this particular pump. Remaining percentage is removing. Normally, 30 percent of flow, suppose if this is Q, 30 percent of Q is uh, recycled and 70 percent of Q goes as the gloss for slash treatment. Only 30 percent or 0.3 times the flow rate is going into the aeration tank and remaining goes out. So that is what is activated sludge process. So this is important uh, treatment system because we have only this treatment system very popularly used. Second thing is that second treatment system what I said attached growth system whatever I have written here. Attached growth systems Okay, when I have written here, the example of attached growth system is trickling filter. Number one is a trickling filter, number two is a rotating biological contractors. Rotating biological contractors. These are the very popularly used. Uh, secondary treatment systems for attached growth, attached growth. So in the trickling filter, what normally we do is we have same thing again, we will go back to this particular thing and try to draw a, a flow diagram for that. Secondary treatment based on trickling filter, TF is a trickling filter, that is uh, we can see TF is a trickling filter. So again, the effluent from primary, effluent is coming from the primary, okay. This will flow into a trickling filter. So trickling filter will have a distributing arm. So let me put it here as a distributing arm, which distributes 
the waste water on the media. So, this is the this is a plan view anyhow, this is the media. Okay, the waste water is distributed, okay, this is a dotted line, we will put it here, is distributed, these are the distributors, these are the nozzles, through the nozzles and this is distributor is rotating, in fact it is a rotating distributing arm, it rotates, it moves like this in this direction. When it is moving, it also sprinkles the water or sprinkles the waste water on the solid media, okay, that is what it does. And we will discuss more details when we take up the design of this particular the tickling filters. At this time, I would like to describe this particular process only. So, after that, I have a secondary sedimentation tank SST as usual and then this particular thing goes for the uh, sludge treatment. This goes for the sludge treatment, okay. This is going for the sludge treatment and the effluent, treated effluent, treated effluent, let me remove this, is a uh, going out for disinfection, what I will do is a part of the treated effluent, I will recirculate. So, that means this is a recycled pump and uh, treated effluent recycle, okay. This is the not recycle of the solids, recycle of biomass is not there here, but recycle of effluent is there. Let us understand what is happening here. The, the liquid, okay, the effluent, the organic matter flows on to the media. On the media, there is a growth of microorganisms and that growth of microorganisms will remove the organic matter and after that, the liquid flows out into the, into the secondary sedimentation tank. When it goes out to the secondary sedimentation tank, there are some solids and those solids will settle down, solids will settle down and these solids are treated in the sludge treatment unit, they are treated in the sludge treatment unit. Now, since the biomass is immobilized in the reactor, there is no need of supplying the biomass into the system, I do not have to supply the biomass like in the activated sludge, in the activated sludge there is a recycle of biomass. In the trickling filter, there is no recycle of biomass. There is a recycle of the liquid effluent. Why this recycle of liquid effluent is uh, uh, recycled is required means this recycle is to rotate the <coughs> distributing arm. The purpose is to rotate the distributing arm during the periods of low flow on um, during the low flow periods. When the liquid, when the waste water production is less, then we are going to sort of uh, re uh, sort of rotate the distributing arm by using this effluent. We supply this effluent for the uh, for, for uh, distributing this particular thing. So, this is the second type of system what we have attached growth system. Now, you can see one thing, I have all the time in the activated sludge as well as in the trickling filter, what is called as a sludge treatment unit, the sludge has to be treated. So, that sludge has to be treated using another biological system like this, the third biological system. Let us go here, so that means this is the sludge coming from primary and secondary clarifier. Primary clarifier, please uh, um, recap that in the primary sedimentation tank also some organic solids have settled down. Those organic solids have to be treated further. If I do not treat that organic solids, if I do not treat this sludge from the trickling filter, 
if I do not read the sludge from the activated sludge, then what is going to happen? They are going to produce some odor, they produce obnoxious smell. So, in order to uh, eliminate that particular thing, we have to treat it. For treating that particular thing, I will go back to this slide, the slide which on the uh, thing, sludge from the primary and secondary clarifier, I will take it and then take it to a sludge thickener. What is the purpose of sludge thickener? Sludge thickener is, the purpose of sludge thickener is to remove the moisture, so as to have a compact volume of the sludge. So, that sludge from sludge thickener, uh, the sludge will come, that is the dotted line given in, in, the, in, the, in the sketch, okay, in the slide, that particular thing comes to what is called first stage digester. There is a first stage digester. In the first stage digester, what happens is that the organic matter, now the organic matter is nothing but the sludge from the primary and secondary clarifiers. That is organic matter settled down in the primary sedimentation tank and then the biomass that has settled down in the in the activated sludge or in trickling filter. Okay? So, those that becomes the that becomes a food for the microorganisms. So, just I have to write one equation here. So, that equation is as following. That is what I will do is organic matter or organic matter or let me put it like this. Instead of organic matter, I am going to put organic suspended solids from primary sedimentation tank PST plus biomass from secondary sedimentation tank SST, I will put it here. This is a secondary treatment, secondary treatment, this is a primary treatment, the first one is a primary treatment. These are, one is a suspended solids, organic, another is a biomass, biomass is also organic suspended solids. Both of them are taken into a, a sort of a reactor okay, and impress on them that is the microorganisms. I will give some microorganisms and provide anaerobic conditions. Anaerobic conditions means no oxygen. I am not providing any oxygen. When I do not provide oxygen, what these microorganisms, the microorganisms are known as anaerobic microorganisms. These anaerobic microorganisms convert this organic matter into what is called acids. The acids are acetic acid, mostly it is acetic acid that is produced, let us say here. This acid is acted upon by what is called a methane forming bacteria. So, there are bacteria which are methane forming, which are anaerobic and these methane producing bacteria convert this acid into methane, carbon dioxide, sometimes ammonia, some ammonia will be there, sometimes H2S. So, these are in traces. So, these are the major components or carbon dioxide and ammonia and uh, carbon dioxide, sorry, carbon dioxide and methane, methane gas and carbon dioxide, ammonia and H2S are in traces. So, these are produced, that means what all I have done is that the sludge that is organic matter or for that matter the biomass is converted into acid and acid into the gas and this gas has got a fuel value, it, is, it can be used as a fuel, methane can be used as a fuel, as you know you can burn this methane gas and get energy out of it. So, this is what exactly we are going doing in the secondary treatment, again this is also secondary treatment, but this secondary treatment is lot different from the normal secondary treatment, this employs what is called anaerobic digestion, employing anaerobic digestion, I can uh, convert the organic matter as well as the biomass from the secondary sedimentation tank using uh, what is called a microorganisms to acid and uh, using methane forming bacteria that acids are converted to methane. So, these bacteria are called as a 
you know the one which produce acids are called as acid producing bacteria acid formers specific name that we can give so that is what exactly uh, can come back to the slide that is what exactly the first stage digester we in the first stage digester all this reaction take place and after first stage digester I have got second stage digester also in order to extract more energy out of it whatever energy that is available so in the second uh, stage digester whatever gases that are produced you can see gases like methane carbon dioxide ammonia etc okay that is that uh, constitutes some trace concentrations of h2s also then what would happen is that the the liquid excess water from the second stage digester will go to the primary clarifier again it has to go to the treatment okay primary clarifier that is primary treatment it has to go it go to that particular thing and then digested sludge goes for disposal in fact in india and uh, uh, some other countries we use this digested sludge for growing uh, you know some of the uh, crops okay that can be soil conditioner we use that particular thing as soil conditioner and finally we have got uh, you know from there that particular digested sludge we can use it very uh, very well for the treatment of uh, soil soil treatment it can be used now i would like to uh, summarize what all i have done here is today enhancement of uh, wastewater quality and uh, by treatment the treatment constitutes of primary treatment secondary treatment and tertiary treatment tertiary treatment we will take in the next class thank you